And now we're going to break down the top issues in this election. We're going to start with our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, with the economy. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Georgia. And the economy remains a top issue on voters' minds. And whoever wins this election inherits an economy that is growing faster than every major developed economy in the world on jobs. The unemployment rate currently 4.1 percent. That is historically low. There is about one job opening for every job seeker. And average hourly wages are up 4 percent, now growing faster than inflation over the last year. The stock market is up 20 percent. That is the best 10 months of a presidential election year since 1936. And when you look at gasoline prices, which had spiked, they are now down about 30 cents from a year ago. In fact, when you look at inflation overall, George, it is up 2.4 percent over the last year, and that is way down from the 9 percent spike we saw two summers ago. She has fueled anti-incumbent anti sentiment all around the world. One of the big questions in this election is what impact it's going to have here. It, it, it could have an impact here because inflation has been this worldwide phenomenon and people have really felt it. It is the constant reminder of what you're paying now versus three years ago. And there are still these lingering effects of the inflation from 2021 to 2023, whether it's in housing, at the grocery store. Consumers are feeling this every day and families are still stretched, paying about $1,200 more a month on the same goods and services as they were a year ago. It's particularly stark for families and those adults without a four-year college degree. While both candidates offer various pricing measures to try to drive prices down, what I talk to voters about every day, they want to feel that that American dream is still alive and well. They want to feel that prices are attainable for their family, George. Okay, Rebecca, thanks very much. No All doubt right. economy, top on the list, but we go now to Elizabeth Schulze, who has more on the issue of abortion and what both Trump and Harris have said about that. Good morning to you again, Elizabeth. Hey, good morning again, Robin. Polls are now open here in Arizona where voters will decide if the right to an abortion should be enshrined in the state's constitution. This is one of 10 states with a ballot initiative to expand abortion access. In every state where abortion has been on the ballot since the end of Roe v. Wade, including in red states, the abortion rights position has won. And that helps explain why we've seen former President Trump change his position on this. He had supported a national abortion ban, now says it's up to the states. Vice President Harris is hammering Trump for appointing three of the Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe. And we know that it's mobilizing women voters. Our latest ABC News Ipsos poll show that shows that Harris has an 11 point advantage over Trump among women. Harris hopes that by putting reproductive rights at the center of her campaign, she can edge out Trump in critical battlegrounds like here in Arizona, Michael. Definitely a big issue there, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for that. Now to John Keonis in Dallas, Texas on immigration. Good morning, John. Good morning, Michael. It's one of the hottest political issues in this election, immigration. But here's a reality check. The situation along the U.S. borders, both southern and northern, is starkly different from what it was just a year ago. According to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, from October of 2023 to September of this year, the Border Patrol apprehended migrants in between ports of entry one and a half million times. Now, that's the lowest number of apprehensions in four years. And it's due in part to President Biden's executive order establishing new restrictions on asylum. Now, Donald Trump has promised that if elected, he would order the largest mass deportation in American history, but he's offered no specifics on exactly how that would take place. Kamala Harris has said she wants to create pathways to citizenship for migrants and dreamers already in the U.S. She also says she'll fight for the bipartisan border bill that Trump urged Republicans to strike down. And finally, when it comes to non-citizens voting in this election, well, the truth is that's illegal and extremely rare. Robin? It is. All right, John, our thanks to you.